Hi, everybody. Devin Stone here. I realized that a few episodes of the popular anime series Dragon Ball Z did an absolutely beautiful job in representing the male initiatory ritual, the male initiation rite. And I thought this would make kind of a fun um, episode. It's really great to see this um, process outlined in, um, in popular culture and in popular media. And I think you really have to stop and wonder why that is. I mean, do you think that the creators of Dragon Ball Z and the producers and the original writers of the manga did all this deep research and were reading, um, you know, Joseph Campbell and all this stuff? It, no, I don't really think so, because even Joseph Campbell himself said that um, mythos was a part of the human collective unconscious. It's something that is there and something that we all really know and can recognize. And so when we go to create stories that are rooted in values, um, they become mythical. And Dragon Ball Z has all of those elements. You know, there are certainly uh, plenty of deep mythological references and representations in Dragon Ball Z. And um, they have even a, a, a cosmology that includes an afterlife, um, even this notion of a wish granting dragon that if you collect these um, seven talismanic objects, there is a Chinese style or, or Asian style dragon that one can summon that will grant you three wishes. I mean, that is a straight out of Asian mythology. So Dragon Ball Z certainly um, is uh, channeling plenty of, uh, of Oriental mythology in the piece itself. Like they can't help but do that because the aim was to create a story epic and there are only so many story epics um, out there um, one has to reference mythology um, but also when it comes to manhood we have some good examples of um, masculine archetypes in Dragon Ball Z and so I wanted to speak in particular on the notion of male initiation how uh, a child might come to shatter his own Oedipal attachments um, via this process. So if we look at season two, at the very, very tail end of season one, you see the, the, the inklings of it. So we had um, Gohan being taken on as a student by Piccolo, right? So um, Goku is deceased and he's doing his thing in the afterlife and he's going through some karmic uh you could say challenges in order to reclaim his right to uh, a rebirth or, or to a mortal life again some very interesting eastern ideas going on with that and then we have little gohan who um is currently unable to really fight back to any degree of effectiveness and um you have his male initiator in the form of uh, piccolo um Piccolo is, I think, a stronger masculine figure even than Goku. Um, you see Goku kind of be uh, a little bit um, naive or at least unwilling to kill his enemies, no matter how vicious they are. Like Goku kind of has a childlike idealism and a, a happy-go-lucky attitude and unless he's really pressed for his life or his really mad and and um by the way i see kind of the super saiyan um transformation as that uncorked masculine energy right that's at the peak of the the super saiyan power is the enough is enough kind of root of the um male orgone or lingam when that's when that's unleashed um i think there there's a great kind of the uber mensch is is unlocked when um when these characters um go into that mode it, it usually doesn't just happen it's past the point of um negotiation or past the point of no return in a battle that um vegeta or or goku uh, um goes into the the um <laughs> the red pill rage or whatever and goes super saiyan so I, I think there's some great metaphors we could draw from that um but more importantly you know um if you think about these characters and the way these characters are written um I don't think that Goku really would have been the best person to initiate Gohan if, if he would have done it at all. Because if you've watched the series, you should know that 
Um, Goku has a wife at this point, and uh, Chi Chi is not all that hot on really any of these masculine activities. So she's um, kind of has that Oedipal protective smothering uh, nature to little Gohan. And she has told Goku straight up uh, he's this martial arts stuff is not for him that I want him to be a student. He's going to be a good boy and he's going to do these things. Um, uh, Chi Chi has berated um, Goku's uh, preference to work on martial arts. He, she calls she has called his friends a bunch of karate bums. So, you know, she kind of has that, um, you know, shall we say nagging tendency to control and does not show a lot of um, respect for these male spaces, <clears throat> even though Goku himself is not eager to give give that up. And um, he kowtows to it. So when Chi Chi tells him he's not going to live that life, uh, Goku kind of goes, OK, whatever you say, dear. And that's one of the more frustrating things about the Goku character, in my opinion, is kind of his nice guy um, tendencies. He, he does have that. Um, he doesn't um, doesn't look into his son to say, well, you know, let's see who he really is before we start being too prescriptive with his career. Or even, you know, vicious intergalactic murderers like Frieza and he resorts to these weird nice guy you know negotiations like you have to promise to not be bad or whatever it's just kind of ridiculous i mean um and uh goku's been called on that kind of um behavior by <laughs> many many people you know including vegeta and others that you have to to kill these 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 threats or they're just going to come back and cause you more pain and kill more, more of your friends or or perhaps the whole human race but so goku um, which is one reason how Goku landed in this death predicament in the first place. Uh, you know, he couldn't hope pull the trigger or whatever. So, um, he's dead and he's not there. So Piccolo steps into the role of, um, of initiator and Piccolo has the, the guts and the fortitude to do certain things in order to raise, Gohan into a man and a warrior that I don't think uh, the character Goku even would do. So, of course, much to the dismay and protest of Chi Chi, Gohan's mother, of course, right? So that, that's what this is all about. So you see this necessity to overcome the mother's um, need to coddle and to protect. And that is... Um, necessary when the child is too young, but it becomes toxic later on, right? So if that connection is not severed, you have man children, dysfunctional, Oedipal man children grow up as the result. Men who cannot function, can't draw boundaries, um, and um, expect things. Like a, a, a boy who has been coddled and not been taught self-reliance becomes um, kind of spoiled by the presence of the mother's teat, um, even in um, metaphorical ways as he gets older. He expects to just be taken care of. He expects to have money thrown at him. He expects to always have a nice place to live. He doesn't develop that testicular fortitude, the generative fortitude to live from the inside out, to go make something of himself, to rely on himself, to trust in his own competency and learn things and develop those skills. Right. It is said a woman is born and not made. A man is made and not born. You see this depicted in um, in the film 300. So, again, if, if the if the if the tribal unit is, is tight and the culture is tight and well connected and, and these um, structures and the necessity for male initiation is known, then the women are wiser and they know and they understand the role and even um they play along with it. They might yell and scream like, um, oh, don't, you know, when the male tribe comes to abduct the boy, they play along with it. They cry. They go, oh, no, don't take him. But they know that it was necessary. So um, like Leonidas's wife played by Leanna Headley in 300, she doesn't appear to be uh, the kind of Oedipal mother that would resist the the need for the initiation. Right. She even talks up to, you know, 
Peter Mensa's character, the poor guy who gets kicked down the well. You know, I met I met Peter Mensa um, out in when out out in Venice Beach, and I saw him at a restaurant. I went, oh shit, it's Peter Mensa from Three Hundred, and um, he's such a cool guy. But uh, who could forget um, he as the messenger of. Um, of uh, Darius, the Persian king, getting <laughs> notoriously drop kicked down the well by by uh, Gerard Butler's uh, Leonidas. But um, Leanna Headley says only only Spartan women give birth to real men, so she's really proud of the role um, that she plays. And and certainly, you know, if it came time for their son to be taken away on his initiation, she would not object. Uh, but in um, the tale that's being told at the beginning of the film, <clears throat> that's kind of also educating us as far as how the Spartan culture works. Um, Leonidas's mother, when he is taken away, she is screaming and she is yelling and she is uh, screaming no and, and trying to catch him and she's having to be restrained by the Spartan warriors. So my point is that that resistance can be expected and it is not to be... Um, debated or argued with. Uh, we must do this because as men, we understand that we cannot have dysfunctional <laughs> man, children, males um, among our midst, or even as uh, Jack Donovan would say, women, men, we, we can't have that. Our culture will collapse. Now here <laughs> in the 21st century, our culture, culture is collapsing due to this problem. So Removing the boy from the clutches, the nurturing clutches of mother so that he can be forced, forced to learn self-reliance. And Piccolo is brutal and he knows that this is necessary. So he sticks Gohan on this island and says for six months, you got to make it by yourself. Now, keep in mind, oh, this is done so well that Piccolo is literally hovering over him like a like a guardian angel so piccolo can fly a lot of the characters can fly um and um that that's kind of a cool metaphor for manhood anyway there, there's certain powers and abilities that you acquire but piccolo is watching he's he's watching over gohan um just as a real male initiator would just in case if if gohan really was gonna die or if he was going to starve to death not a little hungry or a lot hungry, but was going to die and death was imminent. Um, I think it's pretty clear to see that, you know, uh, although this isn't stated uh, matter of factly, but we can surmise that perhaps um, Piccolo would swoop in to save Gohan to prevent imminent death. Because after all, um, Piccolo has rescued Gohan um, uh, later on after the fact. So um, he is watching as in, um, you know as has been done for thousands of years um, when male initiators would send the boy out on his own and try to make it on his own for a weekend or maybe a week if we're going to push it. Um, they're watching. They're watching from the trees. They're scouting. They're keeping an eye out on him just to make sure. But if they swoop in at any inkling of danger or imaginary danger as a worrying mother would, that would defeat the purpose of the exercise because the purpose of the exercise is for the boy to dig deep and find the depths of his own internal reserves that he did not know was present and to really force himself to solution and think and, and think on his feet and, and be pressed sometimes into that survival necessity that requires one to um, problem solve and find the will to act, maybe even kill, kill an animal and so on. And so um, Gohan goes through the crisis of childhood. He panics, he cries, he whines, he wishes for his mommy and his daddy and why me and this and that. And um, the survival necessity forces him out of this. So um, Piccolo checks on him. And after a while, as the six months have gone on, um, we see an entirely different Gohan emerge which is one who knows how to cook. He knows how to cook um, dinosaur tail steak. <laughs> he cuts off a dinosaur tail and and cooks it um, and is uh, wholly self-reliant and is, uh, is training on his own and actually loses track of time um, in a way. Uh, Gohan, um, also, we get a preview in this state 
of the true inner power that the masculine has when Gohan becomes the the beast mode Saiyan, right? The full moon comes out and, and Piccolo is amazed and we see this ape man character, right? So there's no better metaphor for um, raw masculinity in its own right. And as I've said many times, this can't be fixed. You can't redefine men. You can't redefine what is hardwired. So this beast, the the testosterone, the as Ken Wilber calls it, fuck it or kill it impulse is there. And so um, in that wildness, that, that wild state and in solitude under the full moon where beastly things are associated and come out, um, out comes the beast within uh, Gohan, which Gohan is not conscious of, right? He's not conscious of that inner power of what that represents, that, that completely uncorked um, male energy that is um, very special, very latent, very under the surface. And that's how we have to see boys. Boys are men in potentia. Boys are potential men. And it is dangerous. It is scary. It does have the potential to be destructive. And um, like Jordan Peterson says all the time, the this beast, this murderous King Kong like beast is the shadow. You're not a man unless you know that that exists within you. It's it's a repression and leads to your own, I think, decay and downfall and illness. If you deny that that exists, if you're naive and you say, no, that's not me. If you embrace it, then you're a man. Then you can channel it. You can use it. You can impose limits on it. You can impose restraint, but you have not embraced it. You have not integrated the shadow, as Jung would say. See, so that's why we have a masculinity crisis today is that we have the um, neo-feminists and they're wicked. I mean, feminism today is a hate group, uh, 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 nothing less than a hate group. And it's, I would consider it a hateful act to take what is natural and say, well, we're going to redefine you for your own good. Um, repressed masculinity is a, a, a very much a postmodern disease. So um, Gohan has this um, touch with his shadow or his dark side, which occurs only under shadow of darkness in the dead of night under the full moon. Yeah. So it's very Dionysian. It's not not um, Apollonian. It's not under sunshine where we have structure and we have growth and positivity, but we have the flip side. We have the dark, the negative, the violent, the secret, the murderous, the vengeful. The, and, and Gohan goes through all of these things until such time as he becomes self-reliant. Now, in with some of these guys that I've coached, or really all of them pretty much, <laughs> the younger ones, um, when I express to them the importance of moving out of the home and why the excuses that we look for that do they appear to be rational on the surface, right? Like I'm trying to save money before I move out and that's why I live with my parents or my mom and so on and they're, they're 22 and so on. Well, there's a trade-off and you guys have probably heard this, um, this uh, phrase, I made a deal with the, the devil or a um, Faustian arrangement or I sold my soul. Well, that is in fact what you're doing because what is a man? A man is a male human who is self-reliant and independent. So if you're a male human, but you are not self-reliant nor independent, then you are not a man. A man is an adult and we have certain hardwired uh, truths that you cannot call yourself a man until you are self-sufficient and independent, meaning you are taking care of yourself. That's your money, your job, and, and you're living on your own. This is why um, it is so important because you make these trade-offs as if there's no downside to it. And the cost of doing that really is your soul. You are postponing the necessary development into manhood that must happen. And um, the real shame of it is, is that you have mostly single mothers, but not always, but you have these mothers who for their own selfish desires to not be lonely, um, to use their, their own adult sons as um, emotional support, as uh, surrogate husbands and, and so on to, they would leverage that as an excuse to 
infantilize their own sons and sabotage their son's development, just as dear Chi Chi would in um, Dragon Ball Z. And notice she had her son's whole life planned out. She she would be happy to repress the uh, the ape in him or his own independence or even really when, when it boils down to it, the Super Saiyans, what, what I like so much about this is the Super Saiyans are a warrior race. So that's a part of his DNA, his physical DNA as well as his spiritual DNA, those being one and the same. The material being infused with um, the, the spiritual and the spiritual being infused with the material um, and those being reflections and relying on one another. So um, this is, he's the son of a, of a famed martial artist. He is a martial artist and the, who you are, your will is not really something that you can go tinkering with and, and overriding, but due to a mother's protective instinct, some more protective and, and overbearing than others, but um, they would be happy to 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 script your whole life out for you, which is the trade off that you're making. That's the soul murder that you're making. So every moment that you guys spend living at home with your mommies is a another day where you are not experiencing the holy sacred ritual of being a man. I have known uh, men well into their 40s that just never really did that. They just kind of gave up and that's just kind of what you did. You just kind of live with your mom. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you've ever heard a 40 something man get in an argument with his mom over something silly, did you take the trash out? Yeah, mom, I'll take the trash. No, I want to take the trash out. No, I mean, it is really fucking pathetic. It's pathetic. I will, I'll never forget. Um, one day I was working for these guys, these asshole sales guys, whatever, but the boss, he had a big Mercedes. He had a <clears throat> Mercedes. CLS, uh, one of those, and I had to drive it somewhere. So I was driving his car, but, um, I was, uh, I drove it from one office to the other and I got out of the parking lot and I couldn't help but, but over here, this guy in his mid forties getting in, he's in some heated argument on his cell phone. Yeah, but I don't want to do that. No, that won't work. God, I've told you a thousand times. Ah, oh, God, no, I don't want to argue about the guy. Blah, 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 blah. And he's really flustered, frustrated, heated. I couldn't help but notice. Oh, this guy. Well, he's in some argument. Okay. Pacing back and forth in the parking lot, having an argument on his phone. So uh, just as I'm, I'm walking into the building, I couldn't help but hear, I know, mom. And I just <laughs> couldn't help but laugh because he's like, oh, he's having an argument with his mother. Like, does an adult get in silly arguments with his mother or does he just do what he needs to do or wants to do because that that's the thing is that yeah you might make a mistake but your mom might make a mistake the um assumed uh, perfectionism of the life script that your mom or your dad has written for yourself is just entirely an invention of their own narcissism and their own solipsism if you asked me what mistakes have you made in life, I could I could talk your ear off for an hour on the stupid mistakes. But a narcissist has never made a mistake. <laughs> Ask your mom, what mistakes have you made in life? Oh, she might say marrying your father because he's no good. You know, it's like, well, you spread your legs for him, dearie. You thought that was a good idea. <laughs> Aside from that, if you have an Oedipal mother, she probably would be hard pressed to come up with a single fault of her own. Or a single mistake that she's ever made. So she's just so entitled to tell you how to live your life. But the thing to understand here in closing about the Dragon Ball Z. Um, is that as the series goes on. Gohan becomes quite a competent uh, warrior in his own right. And, and grows and develops along those lines. And um, Chi Chi, his mother, certainly objects. But that's who he is. So that split has occurred. And you, I think, if you're going to live your own life, you have to come to terms with the fact that that split might occur. And really, other people don't have the right to object. Um, my mother would, would do a lot of this if she, you know, she's not really a supportive person. So I don't tell her a lot of the things that go on in my life because I just don't want to get into those silly arguments or listen to a bunch of protests. But um, if other people protest or get sad or cry or throw tantrums, there is an expectation there that you're going to live a life that they have scripted for you. There's an expectation that that emotion of theirs is going to be used as blackmail. So it is emotional blackmail and they don't get to do that. Those people should be laughed at, blown off, not answered, not responded to. 
Um, but, you know, hopefully, as, if you watch Dragon Ball Z, you notice this is who Go Gohan is. And the purpose of the initiation was to bring that out of him so that he can function in that warrior capacity. And you have to reflect on the fucking tragedy that would have been his life if uh, Chi-Chi were involved, or even with Chi-Chi and Gohan there present the whole time. His, his dad, his real dad had to die in order in order for this to happen because, um, you, you know, uh, Goku uh, was being a, a kind of a, a piece of furniture when it came to really training his kid in the, in this way. He was not all that interested. He, he was passive. Despite Goku's abilities, you couldn't question his strength and his abilities. When it came to his home life, he was playing a very passive role. So, you, you know, just given his, his character, the way he was, his personality was written and tuned, he would not have done to his son what Piccolo felt was necessary, what he had to do. Because this big battle's coming and the Super Saiyans are coming and we got to get ready and we can't have you be a sniveling little boy. Because he knows, that Piccolo knows, you've got this power inside of you. We're going to need you. And, um, you know, uh, Goku kind of is, he kind of plays the alpha and the beta role when he's married. Beta when married and when he's by himself, he's alpha. He can get out with his buddies. He can fight the bad guys. He can go to other planets. He can, he can do the Superman thing, Kung Fu Superman routine. Um, but... When married, he's a kind of a pussycat. Okay, okay, honey, whatever you say. I, he just kind of wants to be in that passive role and go along to get along uh, and be left alone. So, you know, Piccolo steps into that role of chieftain and the male tribe to do what is necessary. And um, this is really the predicament that men are in today when we have no more bears to slay and, and woods to conquer. But our internal masculine wiring is still there. Our hardware and our software is there. Then um, what do we do? And I, I, I um, realize now that the decadent culture is and is becoming increasingly toxic to men. And the best we can do is preserve the, the need for the right and the need for initiation in any way we can by teaching the boys in our in our circles, our social and our family circles, the skill and challenge them toward competency, challenge them toward independence and self-reliance. And um, very, very sadly, as our culture becomes safer, more predictable and more decadent, so has the protective instinct, the, need, the desire to insulate, to isolate, to protect, which is maternal. It's not not paternal it's it's feminine it's um you know the um the uh flavoring between fascism and communism i thought about this because really you get kind of the same thing in the end right it's a collectivist domineering socialist government essentially but it's kind of a branding difference it's like coke versus pepsi what is the branding difference between fascism and, and socialism or fascism and communism well one is paternal and the other is maternal Right. So the way that the fa that the fascist manifesto was written was like, well, it's it's militarized. It's it's a hierarchical. It's, um, you know, join the ranks of the militarized state with socialism. It's maternal. It's you're taking care of the state is your mommy. The state bathes you, takes care of you. You're a poor baby. It's not your fault. You can't be asked of that. Independence can't be asked of you. You need free health care free. Right. I, you're you're ta you'd be taxed at outrageous amounts. And if we don't count tax as a cost, Bernie Sanders, then it, quote unquote, becomes free. You know, we're going to keep you clean. We keep the environment clean and all these things. But neither of those are desirable. They're they're both extremes. Male initiation is there to provide enough patriarchy so that the child can learn um, self-reliance by the way of imparting skill, by the way of, of challenging the boy and breaking that bond because as men, we have to know that that, that um, nurturing connection cannot protect uh, an adult man, nor should it, and it would be just fucking tragic if it did. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, watch Dragon Ball Z. I think you'll enjoy it. Have a great day.